We've heard today already from distinguished members of this panel that there's a desire to move this legislation forward, that there's a need to create jobs and a need to attract investment to Illinois. I don't think that that matter can be understated. Let's just contemplate the serious situation that our state finds itself in. Historic levels of unemployment, about 11.4 percent. Historic levels of budget deficits. A challenging time to be sure for all of you as members in this legislative body. There are no easy answers and I empathize with the difficulty of the task that faces all of you representing us as citizens of the state of Illinois. This is not an easy time to represent us and I am thankful for the service that you give to the citizens of Illinois and I am thankful for getting the opportunity to speak in front of you today about this important matter. I think that AT&T has the opportunity to help provide a solution to growing jobs and growing investment in Illinois. If you think about it, there's consideration of tax increases, there's considerations of dramatic budget cuts in the state, but probably the silver bullet that needs to be considered the most is job creation. Job creation cures many ills. Job creation kind of papers over the other problems, and we all understand why. We need revenue. Good jobs, good high-paying jobs results in more tax revenues and more opportunities for education, more opportunities for infrastructure. Opportunities abound when revenues are flowing. Jobs are essential to that. I cannot underestimate or understate the importance of the infrastructure of the 21st century. Broadband services, access to broadband, advanced telecommunications infrastructure, wireless and wireless broadband. These are the economic engines and the economic tools that will drive Illinois forward. They are an opportunity that Illinois should capitalize on like its neighbors have capitalized on. The law here is antiquated. We all understand that. It was put into place in 1985, updated in 2001. Now, I would hope that all of you were paying keen attention to me this morning. But you know what? I don't take that for granted. Y'all probably have smartphones. And while I'm talking, you might even be making a dinner reservation. You might be texting your spouse or your child. With the technology that's available today, you may even be able to follow your child to school and, and see on a map that they're in school. Or maybe you want to see the ball game tonight and you forgot to program your DVR. You can do that right there at your desk also. This is game-changing technology that drives innovation, drives jobs, and makes and changes lives. AT&T is rethinking possible with these technologies. We need to rethink possible with our law in the state of Illinois. I feel confident that because you're on this committee, you have a great interest in this subject. You understand the power of these technologies and you've already expressed the desire to modernize the law. That's a given. Now we need to talk about what it is. And I think what it is can be summed up of looking to the neighbors. Are we going to have a law that makes Illinois more competitive or less competitive? Are we going to have a law in Illinois that attracts jobs and attracts capital? or holds on to the past or looks to the future. I mean, that's the challenge that the legislature has to sort out as it hears from, 
folks from all different constituencies. I'm here to offer up to say that this infrastructure is the key to job creation. If you think about history, what has accelerated commerce? Connections. Whether it's connections by the airline industry or connections of railroads, any, time of, any kind of connection accelerates commerce, speeds up the pace of business, and creates growth. There has never been technology in the history of mankind that does what advanced telecommunications does for the world and for economies and for businesses and for consumers. It's miraculous technologies. We are leaving those opportunities on the table here. So, the problem we have in Illinois is we have a law that was put in place at a time where none of these miraculous capabilities existed. It focused, rightfully so, at the time on opening up markets to competition. It focused on breaking the vestiges of a monopoly and providing choice to consumers. It was the most forward-thinking law in the country at the time. Slowly but surely, over time, things changed. Competition developed. The pace accelerated. And our neighbors got smart. They changed their laws to keep up with the pace of technology. 2001, we updated that law. Now it's been almost 10 years. And what's happened in those 10 years? You know, I'm not pleased to tell you about the losses that AT&T has suffered in its wireline business. Today, believe it or not, we've gone from over 90% of the wireline market share in 2000-2001 to 48% today. In the wireless market, we have 28% share. In the wired broadband market, business and residents together, we have 30% share. I'm not here to cry woe is me for AT&T. This is just a demonstration of the choice that consumers have in all segments of the marketplace. The question of whether to modernize this law or not turns on the demonstration of is this market competitive. I think there is no doubt about that. But don't listen to me. The legislature created the Illinois Commerce Commission to carry out the duties of the telecom law. Two times, AT&T has gone before that learned body and made its case as to the competitive nature of the marketplace across Illinois. The ICC found in both cases, consumer choice was robust and indicated that for 98.5% of AT&T's lines in this state, they are competitive. There is choice. Frankly, I don't know of a person that doesn't have a wireless phone. I don't know of a person that doesn't have broadband internet access, either wired or wireless. I'm sure there are some, but that's not in our territory. When you put wireless, wired, broadband, satellite, together, the, the capability for broadband internet access is 100% in AT&T's service territory. 98.5% of our lines have already been declared competitive. 